One million refugees have fled Ukraine since the start of the Russian invasion a week ago, the UN Refugee Agency said Wednesday. That figure accounts for 2% of Ukraine's population, with the agency saying up to 4 million people are predicted to leave, the Associated Press reported. The new total comes as Russia has taken over its first day in Ukraine, and fighting has intensified in the capital city of Kyiv. In just seven days, we have witnessed the exodus of one million refugees from Ukraine to neighboring countries. UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, posted on Twitter. Uh, many of the refugees have been heading to the neighboring countries of Romania, Poland, and Hungary, which have welcomed the refugees and some of their pets. Many other countries have joined in saying they will take Ukrainian refugees, with Japan becoming the latest country, to make the offer on Wednesday. Men ages 16 to 60 are not allowed to leave Ukraine after martial law was declared and the government called on citizens to help fight against the Russians. So, <clears throat> two things to this story. Um, I'm not someone who usually praises the Japanese government, but... If they are taking in Ukraine civilians, you know, bravo, I'm glad. Same thing with Poland and Hungary. Um, and really, that just boils down to a problem I have with with NATO and the UN and all these international bodies where they'll tell you about how awful a country is, right? Did this to Venezuela, did, now they're doing it to Ukraine. But it seems like when it comes to actually assisting the people that live there by getting them out of this country that you swear up and down is the worst place to live in the world or one of the worst places to live in the world. Uh, you get crickets. You don't you don't really see an outreach program of and, you know, they always say like if you say, oh, you want millions of um, Ukraine people to come to the U.S. We don't have enough. It's like, OK, but all of these countries can't get together and cut them up into various segments to where we can all take in some, you know, it's just, it's, I, it's just, it's a pushback that I, I don't buy and I'm not convinced of people's supposed concern when they're against, um, you know, finding ways to get these people out of the, the country that they claim is, you know, so evil and terrible to be in. Um, but I, I do find it also interesting because no one, like, I, I wish people talked more about these governments and how they're not indicative of the people. Like, most Russians are not involved in any capacity with trying to invade Ukraine. They're just normal people like you and I, and that's why it's unfortunate that they're getting sanctioned over stuff that doesn't concern them and they had nothing to do with causing. Um, you know, just like guilt by association, basically, which is what sanctions are. You go after the people for what their leaders do. Um but you see the part where they say that martial law was declared and the government's calling on citizens to help fight against Russia. Like, imagine saying, hello, person who is uh, 60 and you happen to be male, uh, you're not allowed to leave this country. Sorry. You know, I, I wish more that that like that those screwed up laws were, were talked about more because you don't really see it. You, you get like very brief overview, like this one sentence, but they're taking people as young as teenagers all the way up until senior age men and saying you can't leave you have to stay here and fight our conflict that is most likely going to end up with you getting blown to pieces and us forgetting about you the next day so it's just it all in all it's just a terrible saga that's going on it's but i'm glad at least some people are getting out of that country and away from both of those garbage governments, the one the one in Ukraine and the one in Russia.